In the far corners of outer space, man's hands reach out into the darkness, and what do we find there is what we're going to be finding out today as we head into a brand new LP for the 2013 indie release, The Swapper. Now, The Swapper pretty much got massive critical acclaim and is a pretty wonderful and atmospheric game that hopefully you'll enjoy me in this little journey into. So let's go ahead and start a brand new game. And I'll see you after the cutscene. And just like that, we find ourselves unceremoniously dumped out onto what appears to be a pretty barren wasteland of a world. Not exactly sure where we are, though we did get some introduction as to where we just might have been on Space Station Theseus. Theseus being the mythological or mythical founder of Athens. But we won't worry about that too much. I think what comes first is exploring our surroundings and getting used to the controls. The controls themselves aren't too difficult initially, just moving left and right and jumping. And also get used to a very, very beautiful, beautiful game with just lots of background scenery. I think up there we can actually see Theseus spinning around the orbit of this planet. But it is a little bit darker than I'd like out here. Good news is we have this pleasant, friendly light. And that is going to be our checkpoint system for the game. We are going to be needing checkpoints pretty frequently as this is a bit of a trial and error puzzle platformer that have become kind of prevalent in the indie scene. But there is plenty to make this game different from a lot of other puzzle platformers you might see. Namely, its very unique graphic presentation. Now entering Theseus Excavation Site 24 on planet Cori 5. All off-world transport via home teleport at base of installation. All finds property of the Sisyphus Project. There we go, yet again, another familiar name in the form of Sisyphus from Dante's Inferno. But as we are in the tutorial section, we are going to be learning about a few things, such as the map here. Gives us a layout of our position in the room and the size of the room, and any nearby doors. In this case, we do have two doors, even though it appears that one of them is currently blocked off to us. So I guess our only destination is to check out the other door. Now it definitely appears that this is not an a well, a desert planet or deserted planet. It seems like someone was here before and they left behind. 
this bizarre item. Now it uh, tells us to use the right mouse button, and we get this silhouette that manifests a friend. Hey there, buddy. Yeah, our pal here will match all of our movements to the exact point. Though if we do run into contact with him, he just kind of dissipates. Guess we're going to be needing this for future endeavors. But for right now, we are going to use this new mechanic to solve our first basic puzzle. Which is that up there on the cliff, we do have a button we need to press. And simple enough, we can make our buddy press the button for us. Though I do feel a bit bad about leaving him up there. Oh! Yeah, our body does not have a mind of his own. He'll just follow directly whatever we do. So we're just going to pop him up there, and I suppose we have no other choice but to just leave him behind. Now in this room, things get a little bit more complicated. But as you might notice in the lower right hand corner, whenever we pop up that silhouette, it shows that we have another three remaining after we make the first one. So we can have up to four of these buddies on screen at one time. And this is pretty much the essence of the puzzles in the game, though they will get more complicated. Especially in this case, where we see our first opportunity to use all four of our buddies at the same time. Truly, it is magical to watch just the synchronicity that happens with all these buddies running around. But, once you head through that light, all our buddies disappear. So we can't have them come through the light with us, but we do find another interesting thing here, which is the numerous logs throughout the game. Now, feel free to pause these at your leisure. They do give some interesting backstory about, I guess, what happened with Theseus. But more or less, what we find here, I will just quickly summarize, is I guess the device we found is called the Swapper, and that some people felt a little uncomfortable using it. Radio uplink available. Broadcast location, Mind Science Laboratory, Space Station Theseus. What you're telling me isn't possible. <laughs> Tell me who I just ejected into space. Hmm. I suppose they might be referring to us. Also, it's a little off-putting. It strikes me that's probably the first person we've actually heard. But here we find kind of a pointless little mechanic. There are these large boards here that will kind of show us a larger overview of the area, but they are pretty unnecessary. Our map pretty much shows us that in general. But looks like we can't head over to the teleporter. There's a pretty large gap waiting for us, so... I don't know, maybe we'll find something quick that will help us uh, solve that little problem. And I get the feeling that that's what this item is. And no real explanation as to why it's sitting in this large cavern, but now, after we make a buddy, we can switch places with him. Now, this might be a bit confusing initially, but the camera is always going to be centered on the real you and not your buddy. So we're going to use that to our benefit, as we can now get across large gaps. The problem is that, well, our buddy's going to mimic what we do, and... Well, I don't think he's going to survive that fall. Sorry, buddy. 
Much for the best as we can continue forward towards the teleport. Though we are introduced to another new mechanic here. Seems that we cannot create a buddy in the blue light. Some limitation of this swapping device. But if we press the nearby button, it does eliminate the blue light. And it starts to show us just how puzzles are really going to start to pan out as we continue through. Simple, but still a tutorial. Next we are introduced to this red light here. We can't actually swap through the red light, but we can make clones inside of it. And with that, we can send a buddy up top there to depress the button. And just like that, we can now make our way up onto the ledge. You might also have noticed there that I switched in midair, which will become very necessary as we continue on. But we do have another memory terminal. We can take a quick read over. Some of these are exceptionally short. They just contain very short dialogue between people that I guess might have been on Theseus or working down here in this excavation. Seems though that some of them were under a tad bit of stress. Just a little bit. Also, not too much to this particular room, just teaches us about Button. The ship I came here in is fried. I have a rescue team on the way. They'll be here in a day's time. Why not? There must be something we can hear. Yet again, we hear that mysterious female voice. Kind of makes me wonder, maybe we're blocked from communicating with her? Also makes me wonder who exactly she's talking to. Definitely some garbled static, maybe due to our distance away from Theseus or due to all these rocks. It's kind of hard to tell. Definitely not given enough information to determine just what all this alien stuff is, such as this vegetation that's blocking the doorway here. But the good news is, even with all this futuristic technology, we can't really get too overwhelmed. Whoa. Alright, I'm guessing this is the teleporter. Yep. Saw the text there. It seems it's currently offline. And to activate it, we need something called an encryption orb. Well, the good news is that we don't have too many options of places to go. We've pretty much gone through every door we can. Take a quick look at this memory terminal here. Just a little bit of a complaint, I suppose. I guess they're wanting more mining done than is humanly possible. I don't know, maybe if they use the swapper to make some additional buddies, they could get things done faster. You can't make me do that. I won't do it. Not sure what she's not willing to do. Maybe, maybe she had to work in the mines. But that spinning globe up there is an encryption orb. And if your first thought is maybe the buddy can pick it up, Mmm, sadly, no. We're gonna have to figure out some way to get ourselves up there, as we're the only ones that are able to pick up the orbs. It's simple enough, though. Just have to make sure and realize that we have a good range of motion as long as we use our buddies properly. And there we go, we have our first orb. And once you do pick up an orb, it causes all of your buddies to dissipate. And it also causes all the traps and lights in the room to go away. Making for an easy venture back to where we need to go.
So with nothing else keeping us down here on this excavation site, it's time to activate the teleporter. Lovely effect. And let's hope for the best and see where this takes us. guess we're on Theseus, though this place seems as deserted as the planet we just left. But I think this is a good stopping point, hopefully you'll join me next time as we explore this space station proper.